Tonight on Joy News Prime, Ministry of Communications directs mobile telecom operators to immediately cease upfront deductions of communication service tax from subscribers' purchases. Subscribers have been reacting. They were charging it. If anybody creates impressions that they were not charging it in the past, it's a lie. They've been charging. What they've done now is the fact that they are notifying you that if you see a deduction in your credit, then it means that we are deducted 9% for the state. For them to be deducting directly, that's not something that I support, and not at all. But I think if they were deducting it after I buy the credit and then you make the call and then they are charging you on the call, you don't feel it as much as they charge you when you buy the credit and then they take out the 9%. This thing to me would bring more corruption into the system. There should be a, a device mechanism for this and in monitoring, in monitoring the system. I believe there are so many ways to kill a cat. We'll be speaking with the Communications Ministry. President Kufado predicts free SHS will make Ghana the most powerful economy in Africa. Also, in the bulletin, victims of sexual harassment and abuse are being urged to collect evidence to ease investigations. When it starts, take note of it. Maybe meet me here, then some kind of pictures the person may be sending on your phone. Now, luckily for us, we are in, a, in an age where we have our phones. These phones have a lot of functionalities. We should make use of these functions. In business. Trade Union Congress calls on government to address high unemployment uh, rates in the upcoming budget presentation. Talking about creating of jobs, that's the key. Creating of jobs. Because all government that have come, we hear that. But this time we want to see the, 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 the practicability of it. I'm Israel Lai and Joy News Prime comes to you live from the Joy News studio at Kukum Nibli here in Accra with digital address GA0992539. Stay tuned in. In our first story, government has directed the country's mobile telecom networks to immediately stop the upfront deduction of the communication service tax from the purchases of their subscribers. The directive from the communications ministry follows implementation of a recent increase in the tax from 6 to 9 percent from the beginning of this month. The implementation has meant that subscribers receive notifications that their airtime purchase has been reduced as a result of the application of the CST. But this arrangement, the sector ministry says, cannot continue. The directive is contained in a letter to the Director General of the National Communications Authority and it reads... Directives on communication service tax implementation. We must emphasize the fact that CST was increased from the existing rates of 6% to 9% effective September 4, 2019. The tax has been in existence since 2008 and was increased to provide revenue for cybersecurity initiatives to protect the digital infrastructure and policies being used by both the public and private sector. At the series of meetings held between the Ministry of Communications, Mobile Network Operators and the NCA on 7th and 8th October 2019, we were informed that prior to 4th September 2019, MNOs had not been passing on the CST to subscribers but had decided to take advantage of a 3% increase to pass on the ta entire tax to subscribers. This has effectively increased their profit margin at the expense of subscribers. All efforts to get them to revert to the September 2019 situation has failed as they literally exact their pound of flesh from their consumers. To minimize the negative impact of the current mode of deduction of the CST, the Ministry of Communications hereby directs the immediate implementation of the following uh, measure. One, CST should be treated the same way VAT, NHIL, get fund levy and all other taxes and levies imposed on entities doing business in Ghana are treated. This extraordinary upfront deduction of CST and notification of same to subscribers must stop with immediate effect. All unused data invoice bundles purchased by subscribers do not expire and must be rolled over with the next recharge. MNOs will be subjected to strict compliance with existing quality of service uh, standards to ensure value for the subscribers' money in accordance with their license obligations. 
All right, so we have been gauging the reactions of subscribers to the directive, and we'll be bringing that to you in a bit. But joining us via Skype now is Deputy Communications Minister George. And good, good evening, uh, Mr. Anden. Thanks for your time. Now, the first question to you is why this directive to the telcos? Um, good evening, and good, more, good evening to your viewers. Well, I, I believe that uh, the letter from the Minister of I mean, obviously, we believe that the implementation of the increment of 3% as far as communication is concerned has been done in a way that is not making the subscribers and for the better extent, the majority of Ghanaians get back um, we, we came from a regime where the communication service tax was at 6%. There was a 3% increase that took it to a nominal value of nine percent the effective value of that nine percent is seven percent what the telcos were doing since implementation implementation started was that uh, the nine percent was being deducted upon retail before any revenue generating activity was performed and what the minister is saying that the implementation of the communication service tax, like national health insurance levy, like VAT, like get fund, should be applied to the usage such that, I mean, even though they pay the Ghana Revenue Authority monthly upon reconciliation and sales, the, the normal practice that we experience in Ghana is that these taxes are applied based on usage. That is what we are asking them. So we would have wished that they have continued absorbing the six percent communication service tax, but it passes the obsolete consumer. And we think that it is not right that they take it upfront. And then the directive of the minister to the director general of the National Communication Authority and copy to the Ghana Revenue Authority um, Commissioner General um, with the telephones is clear on that. All right, but the directive to them does not mean that consumers or the subscribers will stop paying for the tax. So whichever way, the subscribers would eventually have to pay for this tax, whether it is done upfront or it, is, it happens on usage. Because initially, when the, as you indicated in your statement, when, uh, in your letter, when the, the SCST was introduced, they decided, the telcos decided to absorb it. But now they've decided they're not going to absorb it anymore. And I've just added the 3% to the initial 6% to charge the 9% upfront. Yeah, so the 6%, the telcos must be able to explain to their consumers why is it that they are, um, they are, they are giving passing back that 6% that they used to absorb. Because if the effective increase is actually 2.2, we take it to 7 it takes it to seven percent, and and one big concern that majority of Ghanaians had was the upfront deduction. I mean, um, when you haven't performed a uh, revenue generating activity, that tax is deducted from your from your wallet. And consumers believe that that was unfair, and we are of the view that that is also unfair. The implementation, uh, the way that being implemented. We believe that is unfair. We would have wished that the telcos have continued absorbing the six, and then they can pass on the three based on usage. And so that's, that's, that's what we're doing. The second thing, okay, so I was going to talk about the, the directive on if that's okay with you. you All right, no, but let's, let's stick with this one first. Let's finish with it. So you don't have a problem with the. I don't believe you have a problem with the telcos deciding that they are not going to absorb the initial 6% anymore, do you? Well, I don't know what the problem is. Um, I wish that they continued absorbing. Uh, but but it's, a, it's a tax. It's, it's a tax. So they don't have to absorb it. That's why I said I would have wished that they absorb it. If they've taken a decision to pass it on, we believe that the implementation must be done the right way. All right. So... How different would it be if they decide to, you're saying that you have a problem with they de deducting it upfront. How different would, what difference would it make if they decide to deduct it later? On usage. On usage. Yeah. Yeah, so when I reach out to 
cities. I'll see credit 10 Ghana cities on my phone. I won't see 9.3 Ghana cities like I'm seeing now. And then when I make calls, just like now all the other types of flights, my, my deductions will be happening with the calls that I'm making. If I decide that I don't make a call, I should see my balance as is as is as, as, as my phone. Otherwise, if you're buying 10, 10 cities of credit, then you're probably having to pay the 10 cities plus whatever taxes. Would that be acceptable to you? Well, it depends on what package that they give out. All we're saying is that whatever amount that you're buying, that should reflect in your balance. All right. I'll and come then to your deduction to be based on usage. All right. I'll come to you in a bit, but ranking member on the Finance Committee at Castle at Two Forcing has been speaking on this matter, and he disagrees with the ministry that the CST should not be charged up front. I get a reaction uh, from you after we hear what he's been saying. The ministry or the person who signed the letter does not seem to understand the treatment of value added tax, what it is. In fact, value added tax is charged at the point of sale and if value added tax is charged at the sale then clearly what he's trying to say is that if you go and buy a credit at any point in time they should charge you value added tax then indeed the definition of what they are trying to tell us uh, as against what the telcos are doing today there's no difference so what is he talking about you see, it looks as if they do not have understanding of the tax system and how it works. Because if, for instance, you go to a shop now to buy something, you pay value added tax or national health insurance levy or get fund levy, you don't pay it later. So what is he talking about? I, I, I do not think that they understand what they are talking about at this point in time. At, uh, uh, at this point in time, and that is why probably there is some confusion. Uh, probably that's confusing. But another point that I read in the document that was being circulated is the fact that um, they were saying that in the past they were not passing the cost to the ordinary consumer. I think that is uh, a fallacy. People do not seem to understand the incidence of taxation. Businesses does not carry those burdens. I think the point that they make in this statement is that uh, in this letter is that um, they realized that uh, apart from the 3% that was added, because there was already uh, an existing 6%, apart from that, right. the 3% right. that was added makes it 9%. They're saying that uh, it was uh, the telcos have taken advantage of the addition of that 3% to charge 9%, and they're doing so um, at purchase. That is wrong. That is very wrong. Telcos were charging the 6%. What they were not probably doing was the fact that they were sending text messages. They weren't sending text messages to us. Okay, they were charging it. If anybody creates impressions that they were not charging it in the past, it's a lie. They've been charging. What they've done now is the fact that they are notifying you that if you see a deduction in your credit, then it means that we are deducted 9% for the state, which is a law and sanctioned by the president. It's the president and his finance minister that presented a bill to parliament for us to approve that the CST be increased by 50%. It was subsequently assented by the president. Now the guys are implementing the policy and you are crying. Why? Did they not think about it before they, they decided to introduce the tax? Or they, they just decided to do that and they were expecting the telcos to keep quiet about the whole issue? So clearly, I think there's a problem out there. The, the, the government doesn't seem to understand what they are doing, and they are lost. And the letter completely uh, 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 creates an impression that they do not even understand the way the value-added system works. Clearly, the value-added system, you deduct the VAT at the time of purchase. At the time of purchase, you immediately deduct the VAT or, uh, or charge them VAT. So now they are saying that don't deduct upfront, but rather uh, uh, apply VAT. Well, okay. What is the meaning of what, what, what they are trying to okay. say? All right, so we had uh, Castle Atufosin, who's the ranking member on the Communications Committee of Parliament. We, we're going back onto uh, the liner to speak with the Deputy Minister of Communications, George Anda, who's joined us uh, via Skype. Now, so you heard uh, the 
ranking member on the communications committee, Asu Castle Forcing, who believes that government didn't quite think through this policy or the increase in the tax, and uh, they're receiving the backlash and reacting as a result. I didn't hear exactly the line drop. But uh, the point, if it's the, the point if it's is about government not not thinking through the policy, then that is absolutely absolutely a wrong uh, interpretation or a wrong submission. I mean, government really through the policy, and like you said in your preamble, there are reasons why this education service tax was put in place it is to address our that we have as cyber security and making sure. That uh, we, can, we can make available the right infrastructure, making sure that we can have the right people, and making sure that we can sanitize our homes. And that is something that is not negotiable. There are a lot of complaints about activities happening in the, in the cyberspace that affect the economy in the country. And um, as far as our, our, our own aid um, agenda is concerned, we need to make sure that with the cloud going to digital is also leading, leading the way as far as our digital agenda. I mean, he, he, he says that the implementation is, is, is not, um, I'm sure that he himself would, would admit, or you would admit yourself, if you were a prepaid customer or a prepaid, a prepaid subscriber, this is not what you have been used to. You have not been used to the production coming as soon as you reach out your phone. It's, it's a situation where all the subscribers, the experience that we've had in Ghana is that we pay as you go, as far as a prepaid customer. If it's a postpaid customer, your taxes are added to the end of your bill. Okay, so I'm not okay. too sure. All right. You stop. Now, uh, in, any case, in any case, if you say that that is what should be done, why weren't these deductions being done? Why when was the, the finance minister? Uh, the deputy minister of finance why why is it that subscribers were not getting the deductions as soon as they reach out their phone as far as he was deputy minister and why did he comment on that why did he change for it to happen like what we have all right but the other thing that you the other directive our uh, per your directive they are supposed to implement this e with immediate effect but uh, you'd uh, how immediate because as we're speaking now this hasn't happened well, I mean, obviously, you see that the letter was actually directed to the yes. general of the National Communications Authority, who is the regulator, and copy the telcos and copy the Ghana Regulatory Authority as well. Um, so, I mean, within the shortest possible time, at least the ministry has given a directive of what should be done as far as implementation is concerned. I believe that the telcos will need a few days to reconfigure their systems to um, charge based on based on recharge sorry based on, on usage um, and reverse the situation where these things are, are being based on recharge All right. the second thing that we're looking at also is the situation where some chemicals have bundled offerings to their subscribers I've also received a lot of complaints as far as that is concerned we're saying clearly that the ministry is not happy with the way that those chemicals are implemented a situation where subscribers, when they use you uh, valid, when, when they read the validity of the bundle offer, and and they haven't used the total offer, lose the total offer. What we're saying is that if a subscriber reaches the validity, the end of validity of his offer, and he has um, still benefits in the offer, with his next recharge or his next his next request for the bundle, he must be given the opportunity. So that he can enjoy the benefits that he didn't he didn't finish enjoying. So those benefits must be rolled over, All right. and the customer can continue enjoying them. All right. Thank you very much, uh, uh, George. And George Anda is the deputy uh, communications uh, minister. We've been gauging the reactions of subscribers to the directive. Let's hear them. I think it's a good thing because uh, for them to be deducting directly, that's not something that I support, and uh, not at all. But I think if they were deducting it uh, in the back, at the back end, or like after you buy the credit and then you make the call and then they are charging you on the call, you don't feel it as much as they charge you when you buy the credit and then they take out the 9%. Yeah, that's what I feel. So my, my opinion would be that uh, even if they would 
charge more, uh, you wouldn't know if they charge more in the back end, but you're feeling more if they take it from you directly. I think it's a good idea because if you are going to make a call and they are going to deduct from it, I think that's okay. But when you buy the credit and they are going to deduct from it, it doesn't look good. Like maybe you want to bundle and they take it from it. So if government is holding on to that thing, I think it keeps its promise. So it's a good idea. That one is better than when you load the credit and they deduct from it. With upfront deduction, I don't really um, buy it. Based on their earlier decision, that's um, about 10% increment, 9% increment on credits. I feel some of us do more of foreign calls. And when we buy 10 cities in a day, you realize, that, ah, what did I even use this credit for? And my own credit is finished. And this is other eating into our own pocket. And you make calls. You would see the number of minutes and how much you've been deducted from your credit. So with government saying this, that telecoms should stop this, I think, okay, fine. This thing, to me, would bring more corruption into the system. But there should be a, a device mechanism for this and in monitoring, in monitoring the system. I believe there are so many ways to kill a cat, not only about this. So there should be a way out from this. I don't see why the president of this country have to wait for them to bring such a tax before he will come back and rescind that decision. But the way they were doing it, it was invisible. We we're not seeing it. But now we have realized that as soon as you buy the credit, you could see the credit has been deducted, which is the tax. So I see that to be uncalled But as the president has issued a statement for them to rescind that decision, I think it's a laudable idea. See that now people are in very hardship. Things are very hard now. And when you see the taxes that they are pouring on people, it's outpouring. Actually, the taxes are too much, and we are asking the president to rethink about how taxes are being collected in this nation. And even the way we expected for them to use the tax, we are not seeing anything. We are not seeing it. In other news, President Okufado says a free senior high school policy will help Ghana become the most powerful economy in Africa. He says his prediction is based on the success of the social intervention program. Citing the United States as an example, the president said education is the only way to attain an improved economy in the digital world. He was addressing students of the Trinibua Kodia SHS at Kumewu as he wrapped up a three-day tour of the Ashanti region. The first country in the world to institute the policy of free senior, free high school is the United States of America. The United States is today the most powerful economy in the history of the world. Ghana is going to be the most powerful economy in the history of Africa. The next year, June, which will be the first time products of the free senior high school will be taking their exam. I hope you will remember that there are many powerful people in Ghana who don't want the free senior high school policy. They said it was a gimmick. They said it couldn't be done. Our well, Minister of Education, Matthew Pukuprempe, says the government has commenced construction of boarding facilities for community day schools constructed by former President Mahama. We will have to do almost all the community day schools, especially those that are not in the city centre. Uh, and we have already started, like you said, because the kids, if you look at the one near uh, Drop also, it's five kilometers away from there, no passable room. Uh, how do the kids go, uh, considering the sketchy situation in the area? So the government has taken a decision that all such schools, gradually as far as become available, will, will build dormitory blocks in those schools so that the kids can go there and stay. You're watching uh, Join News Prime, we're taking a break, but still ahead, uh, we will be bring you uh, business and coming up in uh, business, Trade Union Congress calls on government to address high unemployment rate in the upcoming budget presentation.
bring you some symptoms of breast cancer as health matters. So for the early symptoms, some symptoms or warning signs of breast cancer include new lump in the breast or underarm, armpit, thickening or swelling of part of the breast, irritation or dimpling of breast skin and redness or flaky skin in the nipple area or the breast. Also, other symptoms include pulling in of the nipple or pain in the nipple area, nipple discharge other than breast milk, including blood, change in the size or the shape of the breast, and pain in any area of the breast. The Center for Gender Research, Advocacy and Documentation at the University of Cape Coast is asking students to record both audio and videos of incidents of harassment by lecturers. According to the center, this proof will help in making a case against such predators during investigations and will ultimately help reduce sexual harassment. Richard Kojunyaku has been engaging director of the center, researchers and students at the University of Cape Coast and has come through with this report. Um, I have three people here, um, Dr. George Nodro, the director in charge of the center. I also have Richmond. Richmond uh, is in, um, a student rep, and then I have Dr. Amanda Odoi, a researcher here at SEGRAD. Let me begin with uh, Dr. George Nodro. Do we have anything like anti-sexual um, harassment policy at the University of Cape Coast? Thank you very much. Yes, we do, and that's exactly what is lying in front of me. So the University of Cape Coast has... Uh, I have had this document for some time now. The first version was in 2007 and then this is the edited version which is 2015 and as the years go by we review to meet current trends. We get to Richmond because Richmond um, represents the students here at the University of Cape Coast. Uh, to the extent that uh, it's going on here on UCC campus and then I'm sure the exposure that came uh, that came out the other time has actually made these lecturers go down a little. I mean, they, they fear or they think that, or they don't even know whether they are around or something like that. But I think it's, they were supposed to come here as well because here a lot goes. It's just as I already said, my colleagues, some of them will be telling me um, I've been experiencing this here and there, but then they can't come out openly to report. So if... The, I mean, the, 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 if they were here to also do, go and under, undertake this project also around here, it would have helped. Do students come to you, really come to you to tell you that I have, uh, this lecturer has done this to me. This lecturer is trying to have his way with me. I am, I am not interested, but he's still forcing me and issuing threats. Exactly. I think that's the major problem we've had as a university, that they would rather use informal routes to express their displeasure and the pain they are going through rather than coming to the, to the appropriate quarters to report, also out of fear. Because when you go to them one-on-one, -on -one, then they have that confidence that you are, you assure them of their confidentiality, privacy. and So they are yes, doing research, is doing one-on-one -on -one interactions with them. They mention names, they mention their persons, well, even the kinds of approaches or behaviors they exhibit in which they understand and take to be sexual harassment. Yes, they do. Let me get to uh, Dr. Georgian Odu. So um, when these things have come to you, what steps do, do you take? Great. So like we are saying, it's a very difficult thing to do to take a decision that I'm going to report this person. Because from the grapevine, we hear a lot. So normally when we go for educational programs, advocacy, we are mandated to engage in sensitization, education, and then advocacy, yeah. So when we do encourage them to report, so if someone is bold enough to report to us, that is a real step. And this person needs to be protected, need to be supported, because there is also the ganging up. Sometimes it's this particular lecture harassing, but this lecture has friends. And if I'm putting my friend in trouble, then we're also going to make your life difficult. So if someone manages and then reports, we assign the person a counselor. 
And then we are here at the gender center. We also show interest in the person, follow up on the person, call in here and there, find out how the person is faring. So we do that. And then uh, with the counselor, we go to formalization because you have to document your case. And we always encourage that you have evidence. When the person starts harassing, like when defining harassment, is for, it's a continuum from gestures, from comments, from looks, from all these things to the very point of rape, if it could go to that point. So when it starts, it could be a one-off thing, it could be a series of activities. When it starts, take note of it. Maybe meet me here, then some kind of pictures the person may be sending on your phone. Now, luckily for us, we are in, a, in an age where we have our phones. These phones have a lot of functionalities. We should make use of these functions. And if I'm with you in the office, maybe for project supervision, and you're making advances and some comments, I should be able to switch on my recorder, even maybe without your knowledge, and then be recording. Because at the end of the day, if you report and we assign the case to the committee, they would want evidence. It's also possible, like some may flame it up. So we always encourage and then in our education tell them that be very sure of what you are saying because definitely there will be some investigation. So these have been the steps and then there will be a number of sittings until the probing is over. Well, our students of the Accra Technical University are appealing to their lecturers to return to work. The Technical University Teachers Association of Ghana, TUTAG, began a strike action Monday to demand the release of a staff audit report conducted by the National Council for Tertiary Education. According to TUTAG, the report was deliberately used to downgrade the ranks of some members. They said staff of the various technical universities are yet to see an adjustment in their emolument since the upgrade of eight polytechnics to universities. Chairman of the Accra Technical University chapter of TUTAG, Dr. Ibrahim Zubairo, insists their demands are justified. So at the minute, they have to do certain things. First of all, they have to provide us with sections of the Act 922 that NCT evoked in carrying out the staff audit, sections of the Labor Act that they evoked to carry out the staff audit that said they should downgrade lecturers and all that. So we're waiting for that. And then two, the wages and the Salaries Commission are supposed to come out to the plan for us to see what are the allowances that we are entitled to. And then from there, we'll look at it and see if they meet the criteria that our people wanted. Then it's just fair to get back to classroom. No, it depends on the government. We have met them. They have agreed that what we are asking for is legitimate. So. If it's legitimate, then the ball have moved from my court to your court now. So you provide it and we meet. If we meet and we look at it, these are the laws, blah, blah, blah. If there's no law backing what we have done, what do you do? You go and reverse it, isn't it? Or you do the right thing. So there should be give and take so that we can be able to move on. We can't continue to be wasting time on so many things. The right thing must be done. Some students who spoke with join you say the strike is already taking a toll on the academic work. There is much chase on us for us to complete the the course outline they've given us, so it's really affecting us with our studies because we are we have in mind that we were able to complete the topics or the course outline this semester, but then because of the strike, we are having some delays. I don't know what they are demanding. And all of a sudden, they declared a strike. And then for some time, my class, some of the lectures were not coming. So we just come and then sit, there, sit in the classroom all day without doing anything. So if you don't go to the library to study on your own, it means your day will be waste. I've come to school today, but there's nothing to do here on campus. From the semester, from the beginning of the semester and the academic year, um, things have been put in place. Timetables have been set for, for weeks, for a number of weeks, for mid -sems, for exams. And this strike action is taking some of the weeks out. And as we speak now, some of the lecturers have, have delivered their questions to NAP text already for us to write. And if they don't follow the, the, the week, the number of weeks they have given to us, and for, for them to teach us, they are not going to complete the, 
um, course outline. They are not going to complete what they are supposed to teach us before they set the question. And this is going to this is going to go against us, not the lecturers. Dr. Ibrahim Zubairu, however, says they won't call off the strike until government meets their demands. At the minute, nobody who is a TUTAG member is happy that we have to go to strike. But the circumstances that call for it. Last year, we were on strike. They called us, we sat down. What we agreed on has not materialized. We suspended the strike then. I said that if you don't meet it, we'll go. And they have not. The terms that we agreed on has not fully fulfilled. And that's a problem. You know, nobody is happy that we have to go on strike. So we'll go on strike before what is due has to be given us. A former Deputy Minister of Power under the John Mam administration, John Janapo, is accusing government of deliberately shelving the investigative report into the PDS agreement to shield its appointees. Mr. Janapo, who was addressing students of the Accra Technical University, questioned why not much has been heard more than two months after the deal was suspended. He alleged government, despite caution from energy experts, has dispatched a delegation led by the energy minister to the Philippines to renegotiate with Morocco to restore the agreement. Yava says the minority will remain vigilant and guard against any move to reimpose the deal on Ghanaians. The United Nations conduct an investigation about the whole world and they want to write a report. Would they require more than one man to write a report? So far as some of us are briefing, he will not succeed in clearing the PDS scandal. He will not succeed in clearing the PDS scandal that has brought immense shame to this country. And we will not sit and allow them to clear this one. As I speak to you, the Minister of Energy is in Philippines, ostensibly to negotiate with Miracle so that he can clean the deal, come and sack the local partners, and bring the Miracle again, and continue with this thinking PDS deal. To Manila, they can go to Istanbul, they can go to Dubai. They will not succeed with the PDS deal because we we'll remain vigilant, we we'll remain committed, and we will not renege on our promise to guard against what they are doing. Management and engineers of the Ghana Water Company Limited have made a call on government to declare the area around both the Uwabi and Barakesi dams as security zones. The call has become necessary due to the increase in encroachment activities in the catchment area of the dams. Those activities have resulted in high-level siltation of both dams, which supplies water to homes in the Ashanti region. Warrior Ashanti Production Manager for Ghana Water Company Limited, Charles Tulasi, has been speaking with Prince up here farming and they are logging trees and so that is one of the issues now the farmers what we do per the protocol you need to when we get them we apprehend them we have to report do a formal report to the police and then the police will then come in with the national security to apprehend the people and then take them for court so that is what the protocols are that's what we follow okay I don't know of anybody who has been sentenced or fined, but we have arrested more than 200. We, we are of the, strongly of the view that if this catchment area can be made a security zone, where we could have, because in a wager, where our treatment plant is, is the place has been uh, zoned as a security zone, so the military uh, have their camps there. And this uh, serve as a deterrent for those uh, unscrupulous people to continue to come. So if this place too can be uh, declared as a security zone where the military can have their, their camp, it will help us to go. Yeah, so that's what we are strongly uh, advocating for. So we have even written the letters the to that effect. Uh, we've writ written letters to that effect. Yeah, to, so that the, the, the protocol in place now should be still there. Then we want this, this will come as an extra uh, uh, security measure yeah, to, to prevent people from continuing to come and farm. We're taking a break here now after which we'll bring you our editorial.
editorial this week is on sexual harassment. Tara Kum Singh presented. What a week it has been. Last week, it was a comprehensive sexuality education. This week, it has also been dominated by sex, precisely sexual harassment. The BBC documentary called Sex for Grades has stirred up national conversations about sexual harassment. Sexual harassment is not just common in schools, but pervasive in various workplaces. It's common in the streets. It's even everywhere. Even in Trotros. If you think what you just saw only happens in music videos, then think again. I was from Accra going to Takrade. I felt something on my tie. I felt something ticklish on my tie. So I, I, just, I just leaned my head on the seat like that. And then I felt it the second time. He was actually smooching me. To scream for like I had to scream. I just so you screamed. I screamed. I'm like, hey, Papa, hey. I mean, the audacity to inappropriately touch people without their consent is deeply troubling. In downtown Accra, it is common for male traders to grab you inappropriately, and when you protest, they call you names. Very respectable people use their power and authority to prey on ladies. A science teacher of mine, one day called me in the science laboratory and was talking to me and led to him telling me to come closer to him and he, has, he started touching me inappropriately. Yes, a lot of female um, students have experienced this but then are afraid to come out. In the BBC video you saw and heard some respectable lecturers harassing women and passing totally inappropriate comments. These are countless heartbreaking stories of lecturers preying on helpless victims. There are ladies who are forced to give in to demands of lecturers. Even intelligent ladies are forced to kowtow to the lecturer's demands. Where is the outreach? Why are we defending sexual harassment? Why are we not discussing this issue and offering solutions? Some schools do not have the structures to encourage students who have been harassed to complain. Others have structures to investigate. But many students fail to take advantage of it. Why? It's because they are afraid to speak up. Sexual harassment has festered so badly in our moral fabric that it's become the norm. There are suggestions that some of these students make advances at lectures and later feign innocence. But these arguments do not hold because you know why lecturers have the authority and power to stop these advances. Sexual harassment is about power. They have a responsibility to impart knowledge and not give in and later make excuses. Ghana's criminal code has provisions on indecent assault, which includes sexual bodily contact with another person without the consent of the other person or sexual violation of the body of that person in any manner not amounting to carnal knowledge or unnatural carnal knowledge. While the indecent assault is a liable offence and on conviction, the perpetrator may have to face an imprisonment term of at least six months. But we need properly codified and expansive laws on what constitutes sexual harassment. The Gender and Social Protection Ministry must be ahead of this. But laws are not enough. Men must learn to respect women. No means no, not perhaps. Okay, so that's it. I'm Israel Lai. Thank you very much for watching. Have a good night.